All right, Monday morning, Let's Talk Battle Rap Daily. I am your host, Francis. This is your first time pulling up onto the stream. Let's Talk Battle Rap Podcast is on Monday through Thursday, 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m.-ish. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for the props, Tata. Let's get that broadcast shared, and let's get to talking, man. We got a lot to talk about over this past weekend. Shit is broadcast. Thank you for the props. All right, man. Let's get it cracking, man. Let's let's let's. First and foremost, it's been a solid forty-eight hours, and I would have thought that maybe the storm of Cassidy would have passed already. You know what I'm saying? Like it sounded cool to say Cassidy had a debatable or he won, but no. Forty-eight hours later, there is a real large community of people saying Cassidy won the battle. Battle Rap Reddit has a poll. Uh, I haven't checked it this morning, but as of yesterday, Cassidy was in the lead. I put up a Twitter poll on the LTBR page, and uh, Hitman's in the lead. But my biggest concern is this the, this isn't the Cassidy fans just saying this. This is coming from respected individuals in the culture. This is coming from some of my media peers in the culture. This is coming from the subreddit of Battle Rap, where some of the smartest fans live in the culture. And more importantly, this is coming from the Battle Rappers. Some of the battle rappers that are in media in the culture. And I'm kind of blown away by all this. Let's take a look a little bit of some of the rappers that have Cassidy winning this battle. Geechee Gotti picks Cassidy to win this battle. Chilla Jones picks Hitman but says Cassidy is going nowhere. People are going to continue to watch. And the fact that you feel this strongly about him means that positively or negatively, he will continue to get booked. Uh, Pat Stay has Cassidy winning the battle. Excel has Cassidy winning the battle. Rosenberg Raw has Cassidy winning the battle. Easy to Block Captain has Cassidy winning the battle. Shouts to Dunch. He has Cassidy winning the battle. Mickey Fax has Cassidy getting the first round. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of battle rappers. A few here in media, Geechee and Easy, both have their own platforms. Even Pat Stay, who has his own platform too. You guys are picking Cassidy. I'm I'm kind of confused because yeah I see a world where Cassidy won the first and I definitely believe that Cassidy did more than enough for his fan base and his audience no doubt but you know it's it's pretty as simple as this like Hitman's average performance was below what we expect in his Cassidy performance right and Cassidy's Hitman performance was above his average but Cassidy being above his average doesn't necessarily mean that it was better than Hitman being below his average. There's still a gap between those two levels of battle rap. You know what I mean? And I'm kind of just looking at it like people ask the question, well, why can't nobody beat Cassidy clearly? That's not the question to ask. People have beat Cassidy clearly. The question is, why do people let Cassidy get away with it? You know what I mean? That That's the real bigger question to ask because all... I'm not mad at the fans that are picking Cassidy. Like, there's a lot of people that don't like Hitman. Hitman's not the most intricate, lyrical person. So, I mean, if you put all the bars on paper, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody that's going to find some from Cassidy they like more than Hitman and vice versa. It's the battle rappers that are kind of surprising me because, like, Cassidy doesn't have cringy lines like pulverizing, you know what I mean? But he just falls flat all the time and is never a full, like, moment where I feel like fully secure that he's going to keep that momentum the entire time. In fact, he didn't sustain any of the the momentum he created for himself in the first round. That was his best round, and I never felt like in his second or third at any moment was it just as good as his first. Even the even the crowd rejected it. And I'm not going to lie, that crowd booed Hitman first. That that's a fact, right? Hitman had the longest stage time on that crowd, but that's cuz that's cuz of an altercation. Cassidy had the least amount of stage time on that crowd uh in that in that battle per rounds because um the third round, he just cut it a little bit shorter, I guess, than he needed to be. So there's a lot of little optics and details that kind of favor Cassidy. But if you guys are going to go with the statement that Hitman didn't slam dunk on him, Hitman didn't 3-0 him, Cassidy got around, it's not a good battle, it wasn't a great Hitman performance, therefore he lost, then you're, then you're grading him on the most unfairest curve ever. Because at that moment, you're kind of admitting that Cassidy doesn't have a high level of skill set or doesn't perform at a high level that people should be beating him by a certain margin. 
Like, let's just keep that same energy when Maff and Geechee battles this weekend and Geechee is an 88% favorite compared to 12% Maff. I've seen the numbers already. You know what I'm saying? Um... I'm not going to lie to you. On a real serious note, I watched the battle back. I actually did like Cassidy's first round. Not more than Hitman's, but it was enjoyable. Cassidy was enjoyable to watch in this battle. And for the simple fact that the crowd loved Hitman in the first round and shifted their feelings towards him in the next two, even though he fought through it, it kind of created this controversy of like, well, there's another person on the list of battling Cassidy that couldn't get through a Cassidy battle with, like, fireworks. They couldn't just get through a Cassidy battle with all this glitter and glamour, you know? So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I personally, for one, can honestly agree that the material that Cassidy says, like, if anybody else says it, um, we probably won't like it. We have higher expectations for a crucible battle rapper who is an amateur battle rapper trying to become professional over somebody that claims they're the greatest ever. And that's just a fact. Like, we, we completely shift our expectations level for this guy. And it's come, it's gotten to the point where battle rap is no longer about <laughs> watching the performance. It's about creating the expectations. And does the performance meet or or go below the expectations as you created for yourself in your head? And, that, and that's been happening for the last two years, honestly. So every single time we get a big favorite, a huge underdog, this is, this is kind of what happens. Let's read the chat. Did the autograph angle hit for anybody? I thought it was weak. And I actually thought that was probably one of the best parts of the first round. Cassidy, uh, Juwan says, Cassidy won for the simple fact he didn't die. Why can't we get rid of him? Well, Juwan, I don't think Cassidy won the battle, but he definitely won the war. Cassidy will definitely get booked again. Hitman said, I will make sure Cassidy doesn't get booked again. And that objective was failed. So I can admit that, that he won the war. Chill says, Big French, what up? Oh, I like that one. Big French. Salute, Chilo. I see that Scion blue on your name. Salute, my guy. Their first was mediocre. I'm not listening to the rest, says Tata. Um, it's okay. Hitman didn't leave Earth. That's why it was close. Is Cassidy debatable because he hung on to this battle? It's not debatable because Cassidy hung on. It's it's debatable because Hitman didn't, didn't have the Mamba mentality. That's the problem. And what's interesting to me is that like with the Goods battle... This was kind of like the Goods battle, except Goods didn't get booed. Hitman did get booed. This is exactly like the Goods battle. Cassie had a great first round, or, or a good first round for the crowd, right? The crowd received it very well. And the, the other two just wasn't tr didn't translate to the people as well as his first round. Goods probably beat Cassidy the best thus far. Maybe not the most entertaining, but he definitely has, I guess, the, the, the upholds the clearest like margin of victory. <laughs> for for him and Cassidy. Cass won the building. Cass was better in the building than on cam. Raw retired show off. Hilarious. The only thing Cassidy did well was keep rapping and not get phased by the booze. It was a 30. It wasn't actually a body. See, look, there's, there's four ways to win a battle. You either win 3-0, you either win 2-1, or the opponent wins 2-1, 3-0. There's four different outcomes somebody can say to this battle. I'm seeing all four outcomes for this battle. So that means to me that everybody has a weird perspective on it. And the perspective to me is just as clear as this. The hitman did not kill him. So everybody feels the need to gravitate towards Cassidy for that reason. Because... I understand if, like, the Cassidy the Cassidy stand base, right? I get it. They're going to invade Battle Rap. Some of them might be in the chat right now. They're doing their job. I'm not mad at them. Um, media, people in media, I feel you. You wanted to see Cassidy kind of get slam dunked on, and you didn't get that, so you feel like you didn't get your, your, your money's worth. It's the rappers that are confusing me the most because it's like, you guys know material, like, I'm confused. And if you don't know material, you at least know all the other intangibles about it. The angles, the performance, the execution, the delivery. Like, you're not going to sit here and really tell me that if you make a whole list of battle rap categories in a, of a battle, Cassidy checks more boxes than Hitman. Like, I, I'm not going to believe that from a battle rapper. We should be able to keep it real, says Tata. Cass won one zero zero. I like that score. Suge will put on a better battle versus Cassidy. Francis painting a narrative. 
The battle rappers are painting a narrative. I'm not painting a narrative. I'm confused why battle rappers who probably know the art more than everybody else, right? Air quote, are the ones picking Cassidy. That that's what's shocking me. That's what's shocking me the most, cause like and more importantly, battle rappers that are in media. It's one thing if you're just a battle rapper tweeting it out, right? If you're Excel tweeting out Cassidy one, yeah, cool, fine, nobody cares. But when you're when you're Geechee Gotti with a whole podcast, a whole media platform, a whole a little bit of everything, I'm like, wait, what? Why? What's happening? And then everybody does the whole quota bar thing, right? Quote quota bar. No, what? Every everybody's like, oh, why don't you quote a Cassidy bar? Well, why don't you quote a Hitman bar? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I don't, I don't know. They say Geechee's not biased. Geechee and Pat stay surprising me. Well, I, I'm not calling Geechee biased, but Geechee obviously wants to battle Hitman. So if this is a perfect opportunity for you to get that plate lined up, yeah, of course you're gonna pick against them. Quota bar is such a cheap rhetoric theory. Because I could definitely quote a lot of the Cassie bars in the second round, Mr. Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of those. This, this wasn't good. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. All the rappers who said Hitman lost, he dissed on the top tier track. That's a funny correlation, man. All right, 13 minutes on Cassidy and Hitman is too long for me. I want to move on from Cassidy and Hitman. I actually want to talk about Hitman being the, the, the cover of the Champion Magazine. Please share the broadcast. Um... I was a little confused by this, mainly because so far issue one had Loso over the Super Fight Kings and Queens weekend, and Loso probably had one of the best performances, or at least one of the best rounds that weekend. But Rusik Mike P had a great battle. Danny Myers had a, a another great performance. Uh, obviously, Coffee and Top had a, one of the best battles back and forth. And Coffee rose expect rose above expectation. Like there's a lot of good storylines to pick from. I'm not mad at Loso being in the mix because he had a great performance. Uh, Ace and John John, let's be honest about that bullpen card. All the, the undercard was just an appetizer for the main event. And Ace and John John was a grudge match that uh, at least lived up to expectations and was the best battle on the card. Two sentences that you rarely ever say for main events or grudge matches. And Fonz and Av, K-Shine and Lou was the best, not only the best battle on Double Impact, but some people in media, some league, uh, league staff, some rappers are all saying that was one of the best two-on-twos they've ever seen at of all time i'm not jumping out the window but i'm just saying i'm not to agree with them but yeah like that was one of the best battles that night so so far every issue has correlated to best battle or best individual performance so when i see hitman as the cover and in his title it says you know uh a tough crowd. Hitman has a solid. It says Cassie makes improvements. Hitman has a solid performance. I'm like, is that cover worthy? Is that cover worthy? Like, I, you know, and and, and if the covers are going to be strictly storylines, it, it makes sense. Then it does. It really does because we're talking. We opened the show with Hitman and Cassie. We didn't open the show with A Ward and Will. You know what I'm saying? Everybody starts their blogs with Hitman and Cassidy. Everybody that's done their recaps. I've seen, I've gone through all the people's channels. The Hitman and Cassidy recaps have, does at least four or five times more numbers than everything else. And if this wasn't proof prior, this is proof now that the best battle doesn't always mean it's the most entertaining battle. You don't have to be entertained by the bars anymore. That's why politics and battle rap exists. Because there's people that perform at a better level, giving you better performances, giving you better battles that are not the main part of the traction. They're not the first thing on on, on, on the opening list to talk about. They're not the first thing media media members are running to, uh, the rappers are talking about, the people are tweeting about, fans are talking about, are arguing about. It's, it's, it is what it is. It will and it was probably one of the best battles this year. And without that battle on that card, that card is probably the second worst Cassidy event. So, I personally would like to see A Ward and Ill Will, or at least one of the two, as the cover, just because so far every magazine has correlated to having the best performance. And I don't think that it's compromised. I don't think that there's any politics. I mean, maybe it's a little bit of politics, right? Maybe it's because Hitman is the biggest storyline. Hitman and Cassidy is the biggest storyline. There's no doubt about that. I love A. Ward and Will. It was a better battle. But when I got my VOD, I, well, I went to watch Cassidy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I also watched Ward and Will plenty of times. 
But, you know, it is what it is. I don't think it's Philly loyalty. I don't think that it's compromise. And don't let one cover that you disagree with make you feel differently about the other three. Because the other three covers are great. This one, eh, not so much. Let's see, bro, you know it's not going to be like that. Uh, hip-hop has more star power. Star power makes headlines. That's correct. Black said it before the event that was going to be on there. Must have missed that, but that's good to know. The best battles never get the top views. Yeah, Ozzy, I mean, writer's block. The era of writer's block already taught you guys, if you didn't know this already, the best battles are not going to get the most views. The best battles are not going to be your main events. The best battles are not going to be the biggest talking points. And then everybody says, oh, well, it's politics. Well, maybe it's not politics. Maybe it's because the and being entertained by strictly bars and battle content for 30, 40 minutes is, is more difficult to spread out to the masses than being entertained by drama being entertained by, by by stage answers being entertained by altercations being entertained by toxicity like you can watch the hitman holla and 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 cassidy face off and just be entertained off the fact they're about to fight it's always been moment over bars and i'm sorry it's always been moment over bars you know what I'm saying? It really has always been that way. Like, this isn't nothing new. Um, everybody that's in the culture has kind of been fans for multiple years. Like, we can't keep acting surprised when this happens. Like, this... this when Murder Mook and Calico had that debacle of a performance in that 2 on 2 the first thing people talked about was how bad their performance was before giving credit to Keishan and Lou, Fonz and Av, before giving credit to Geechee and Swamp, you know what I'm saying? Before giving credit to Kit Chaos and Arsenal. So, maybe we like the drama sometimes more. Uh, psychology has it that it takes uh, three positive thoughts to balance out one negative one. So, just think about that for a second. Let's read the chat. Jack says, right, friends? Uh, factual information, that needs to stop. It, 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 it needs to stop, but it won't stop, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um... Moments create an illusion of 3-0. Fans love the bullshit. The best rappers don't get the most sales. This is a dumbed-down era. I mean, it's not a dumbed-down era. This is just kind of how it's always been. You said in your in your own sentence, the best rappers don't make the most sales. It's 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 tragic, man. It's tragic, but it's also reality. It's a reality that we've been a part of for multiple years now, uh, maybe even decades now, if you just love hip-hop as a whole. So this is this should not catch anybody by surprise anymore at this point in time. But I just personally thought that because so far the last three issues have been correlating to the best performance of the weekend, we would have got the same outcome on this one. So that's, that's just me. That's just me. Um, some more stuff on RBE. All right. Um, we're going to talk about the Atlantic crowds in a little bit, but I want to talk really about the one SKs, right? Let's, let's bring down this lower third and let's get this right for you guys here. Before I, before I go off, I'm going to, uh, let you guys chime in first. What do you guys think of the one SKs on these cards, the process, the battle rappers, the whole concept of a 1SK. A 1SK is generally a one round battle to kind of like a prelim battle to open the main card with up and coming non-ranked amateur or under the radar battle rappers. 1SK is fine, but there shouldn't be should be only one per event. Domarino says, I've seen fire 1SKs before, but they never push them. Shout out to Don Marino. What up, Chico? I like them, but they do never. They never bring them. They never bring the next ones back. Says four time. Ozzy says that's too big of a stage for rookies. The one SK works if ARP uses the guys. Math Hoffa's producing. Hardcore flavor. Throw us some names that Math Hoffa's producing. I, I haven't heard much of his guys, but if there's some talented individuals, I would love for them to get on my radar. Um, what is the best one SK? I think the best one SK ever might be Yoshi G and J two, who are now both on URL. 
art so it's like rbs pgs and pr pretty much kind of out, out out you know what i'm saying it's it's their farming system i would say it's the way they breed their homegrown talent um savage says breed did hits it's a good promotion oh we're gonna talk about that speech all right so let's get let's pull up a little bit of numbers here for one sks right it's funny you said. Funny you mentioned easy. I actually had easy pulled up here. So, one SKs. Over the last five years, there's been about 50 MCs to participate in a one SK. And only nine of them have returned. That's Floss the Boss, Truth Watson, KT, MVP, Chip Gambino, your boy Clip, Zigzag, Heavy Half, Nice. Um. Out of those nine names, only one one SK has ever headlined a card. That was Math versus Heavy Half. So that's about eighteen percent turnover over the last five years. And I mean, the numbers are pretty decent, right? My concern is that we see these guys and they're gone. There's no necessarily platform for the one SKs. Um, you know what I mean? There's I went to the RB channel. They don't even have a they don't even have a playlist for all their one SKs. So I mean, like in the in the concept in itself, like you take two guys, put them on this big car for one round, so they can get the exposure. But I'm not sure if one round battles on big cards develop a quality, high level performing battle rapper, because then you got to perform for three cards. Secondly, you put these guys with all these exposure, and they don't do anything with it afterwards. Do you manage these guys? Do you help them promo? Do you help them stay in the circus of the, of media? Do you help them get involved in things? I know they they really push for promo when the battle's about to happen, but post battle promo is just as important as pre battle promo, which I feel like everybody kind of drops the ball on. Either people are promoing the battle crazy before it happens, or crazy after. Never both. Both have to be part of the sequence, and. When I look at these 1SKs, I just think to myself, like, there were some real talented individuals on, on, on their radar that they just never really capitalized on. They never honed. They never put the arm around them to really give them the push. For God's sakes, true foe and easy to block captain were 1SKs before they did PGs. Easy to block captain is a star now. You hear me? This guy is a star. This guy is literally on the verge of becoming a top tier battle rapper. And this is somebody that was in your hands. This is like when the Lakers had Julius Randle and, and they gave him up to New Orleans and they went to the Knicks and now he's an all star. Like, oh, like this guy's been around for a long time. We've been pretty good. We never really noticed. And now he's a star. We could have kept him. We had him first. Like,. Oh, what up, Cuban? Cuban's in the chat. He says, all they do is book you for one round. That's it. Lawrence, my guy, though. No, much respects to Lawrence for, for getting these guys the opportunity. I just feel like you kind of you kind of just let it all go. It, it, it's, it's kind of like not really doing much. If you book them for that one round and then you never see them again. If you don't get them under contract, if you don't make specific 1SK events, if you don't do anything to really farm and breed these guys and develop these guys or do anything to hone the talent, then, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And not any of these guys here on this list. Uh, let's, let's pull the list back up. Not any of the nine guys that have made a return to RB after their 1SKs have made a big URL card. In fact, some of these guys are in the Crucible. Floss did a PG just two years ago. M MVP's in the Crucible now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, they, they get they get some... Uh, the SK stands for shot uh, one-shot kill. So, the S is shot, the K is kill. Um, I do think there's a lot of talented guys they get that just... They just never really sit down and, and hone them. Miss Marla says, don't remind me about Julius Randle. Hey, listen, man, I'm sorry. We, we, we let him go. It's fine. He, he probably couldn't have became a star in our system. We weren't taking care of him. Somebody else took care of him. That's what happened with Easy. I could have took Easy. Imagine they had got behind Easy, the block captain, and Trufo, and, and really put the battery in the machine behind these guys' backs. And now those two guys could have probably been, car not carrying, but some of the forefront leaders of that league. That's something to think about, and that that's always been RBE and I think King of the Dots' biggest issue is their homegrown talent. I never really see it captivate and grow into higher careers. Don Marino says, RBE should push Gage, Truth, 
Young Cannon, Butter, so severe. Shouts to Butter. Butter's fire. Butter had a great one as Cat. I've never seen Butter on that stage again. Cuban says he couldn't stay healthy for us. That's facts. That's facts. Um, J2 and Yoshi was on that platform. They even had Yoshi before URL had Yoshi. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they... They 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 grab the names, but they never really keep them. It's kind of like with King of the Dot. You you guys you guys know that King of the Dot had Danny Myers, B Dot, and Geechee all performed there first for URL, right? And now all three of those guys are just dominant on URL and Rum Nitty too. So you think about the four, three of the four, or four out of the best guys in the West, and they were all from King of the Dot first. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like yo you. You got the star here. They might not be a star yet, but you better show them your loyalties, and then it'll it'll return back to you. Don't build these guys up for them to go somewhere else. So that's all I got to say about the winners' case. I'm not 100 percent sure the system works. There needs to be some more catering to uh, the development of these guys post and after. I wouldn't mind seeing an all one SK card. I'll support that. Cuban says leagues have too much of a preference. Or loyalty to certain battle rappers. That's true. King of the Dot is the comical battle rap. Cuban says that all go. Am I that all goes for? There wasn't from there. They just battled there a few times. Lil Reggie, again, they didn't just battle there a few times. They started there. Majority of them started there, right? B Dot's first battles were at King of the Dot before. Before ever touching URL, Geechee Gotti's breakout performance against Saint was on King of the Dot before going to URL. All right, Danny Myers and Rum Nitty, that amazing classic. There's is an all time battle for the West Coast. There's, they called the West Coast version of JC and Chilla Jones. That happened on King of the Dot. It's not these guys battled there a few times. These guys got their career recognized there. Tata says, I love that battle. The Crucible is the G League system. The Crucible is good, man. We haven't really seen that many success stories yet, but there's a lot of good guys in the Crucible. Don't sleep, man. Don't sleep. I know they've been really under the radar, and I feel like they haven't gotten the proper media coverage, but we're getting LTBR soon to get all the scouting reports from everything, all the total reports of Crucibles that advanced and didn't advance. We need to put some numbers behind all this to figure out what's going on because I feel like it's a really good system. There's a lot of good, talented names. They're behind uh, a machine. They're behind good professional people that will make sure they get to the next level. But um, it also takes us to invest into it, too. You know what I'm saying? I promise you there's some 1SKs right now that are performing better than your, your, your man, Mr. 5004-0. An all 1SK card would be a failure, friends. I mean, an all 1SK card wouldn't be a pay-per-view event, Hardcore Flavor. It'd be no different than having a PG card or a Ground Zero card where hardcore people come in to support the up-and-coming people. This is no different than a small league have, like like Trap New York or Coliseum having a, a, a all-out card for... They're, they're amateur battle rappers that are trying to become professional. Like, it would work. It would, it would work. It would work very well. Um, let's move on from the 1SKs. I want to talk a little bit about some more stuff from RB. I want to talk about AWAR for a second. Um, God damn, AWAR is so good. AWAR is really one of the best battle rappers in the world. Don't let the fact that... A few people in the panel last year try to debunk his year because on a scale of talent, nobody would say there's 19 battle rappers better than A Ward right now. Maybe in terms of resume, maybe in terms of of, of moves he makes, right? Because A Ward is like full blown independent contractor where he'll get highlight battles away from King of the Dow RBN URL. He'll take up and comers. He'll have a bunch of one rounders. He knows how to make his presence and value just spread out all across the country. And it's because A Ward loves battle rap. It's just that simple, honestly. He fe- he looks at it as, wow, I get to travel across the country to rap and do something I love. It's really that simple for him. And because it's that simple and he has that much fun, it's th- it's that reason why he's so good. He doesn't overthink it. He's not overcomplicating it. He's not about the politics, right? Like, if he really wanted to be on URL, he could have been on URL. But if he feels like it compromises his ability to feel free, to have fun, um, to be his natural self, to if it affects his genuine love for the way he outlooks battle rap, that he's not going to 
agree to a certain situation or a certain battle or a certain deal. And it's not just URL. Because there's been RBE cards that he's missed. We're like, yo, where's A-Ward? <coughs> it's been King of the Dot cards. Uh, he wasn't on any of the Grand Prix weekends until the last one. You know what I mean? He's not even on this next card they're throwing uh, this Saturday. So it's not just it's not just URL. It's not like, oh, URL's not giving him looks. It's A-Ward not accepting the looks that he doesn't feel like will bring the best out of him, that doesn't necessarily be beneficial to who he is or or maybe changes the way he feels or his motivation. Because clearly when you get A-Ward, you don't get nothing less than 100% A-Ward. Or even when he takes it easy, you still get a fire A-Ward. Right, the week prior he battled the kick clutch. Somebody who probably is in the crucible still, right? Somebody who's probably really subpar, average. I want to say, right? Like he's an average battle rapper. The week after that he battles the top four guy in the world. You don't just go from battling somebody that's subpar, below the radar, you know, not not a full professional yet, to then going battling one of the best guys in the world and having and still giving the same level of effort in both battles and possibly winning both battles too. Yoshi G in the building. What up, Yoshi? Hardcore Flavor says, a Geechee rematch would be crazy on URL. A-Ward is more strategic sometimes. Is he still battling Arsenal? He is battling Arsenal. Shouts to Arsenal for taking that A-Ward battle. This guy got an Arsenal battle away from the three major leagues. Like, that... At some point, I got to give that credit. He's kind of following the ill will route of his career. If you guys remember, there was a little window of ill will's career where he wasn't on URL. Uh, he did RB King of the Dot and a bunch of other small leagues or local leagues in Michigan. And it, it got to the point his demand built up so high that URL couldn't deny it. And they had to go get Ill Will again. He had a solid three-year window where he was gone from URL. He's talented, but he will never be a preference to what we want to hear, says Lil Reggie. I don't know, man, Lil Reggie. I know there's some people that's like, man, that white boy cold. I got a lot of friends like you, little Reggie. That's not fans of King of the Dot. That, that are not fan of white battle rappers, and I respect that too. F -f -f Sincerely, I really do. And every single one of them texts me this weekend, like, yo, that white boy is cold. It's like Larry Bird or, or like Luca. It's like, yo, you cannot deny this guy. This guy, is, I don't care. If this guy's white. This guy is too good. This guy is too good. We can't. We can't. As a war battle, Chef Trez says Harry Truman. They have battled. I wish they didn't get it. I wish they hadn't battled yet because there's so much more of a market for that battle now, but they have battled. Um, Mr. Jubox says, bro, there's a few people that would hurt A Ward on URL. Yeah, I mean, he's not untouchable, though. He's not untouchable. He has lost. He's lost battles. I, he's lost to DNA. He's lost to Ilmac. Like, I have seen Ward lose battles, too. Um, A Ward is the Luke of Battle Rap, says 2 Heavy 401. Lil Reggie says, nah, A-Ward is different. He's talented, like I said. He's still got to be on URL. I agree. Of course, everybody wants to see him here. This is the biggest league, the most competition, the most opportunity for plates. Everybody wants to see him here. Um, Mr. Jukebox says, Kid Chaos, real sick, T-Top, twerk. Yeah, I mean, I can see War losing any of those battles. I can also see him winning all those battles, too. A Ward is on a run now. Loso's about to be uh, on one next, says Ozzy247. I kind of like Indie A Ward without the machine. I like Indie A Ward too, update guy. Um, I love that he's able to stay. Like, there's only a few people that can stay relevant away from the main leagues. You know what I'm saying? It's not a lot of guys. So, like, for example, if you see, like, I don't know, let's say Holmesy and A Ward battle on a small league in, like, Jersey or something, you're going to tune in. A Ward's gonna give 100%, and Holmes is gonna give 100% because he knows Ward's gonna give 100%. And that's a fun battle. I'll watch it. And that's a stock raising battle for both of them away from URL King of the Dow RBE. That's a good example, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, this upcoming weekend, he's battling XL at an eye battle. XL's a regular over there at eye battle. Lyrical, pen heavy guy. Underrated battle rapper. Um, and this is gonna be A Ward's third battle in three weeks. And watch him still go crazy this weekend. There will be a pay-per-view. Shout out to I Battle. We'll talk more about it this weekend. I mean this week. Harry Truman says he hasn't had a clear loss either. I gotta admit, I'm not gonna front Harry. I thought he lost to a um, Ilmac clear. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely had an amazing third round against Ilmac. Mr. Jukebox says, "Yeah, bro, the rapping in this event just felt super average." 
Miss Marla says, my champion of the year picks is Danny and Award. Miss Marla, there's a bias there because you're a Lakers fan, so you have the West in your number one. And aren't you from Kansas City? So you have Award at number two. You have your, your two favorite teams as your top two champion of the year picks. I, I, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening. <laughs> um, I think Mac is debatable. Danny for champion of the year, says Tata. Little Reggie is not excited. That 30 versus Geechee about to start counting when he steps to the URL. Miss Marla says, I'm struggling, but I'm happy. Shout out to Miss Marla. Jukebox says, L- listening to Cassie rap, I was like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> yeah, man. When you just see Ill Will and A Ward, and then you go watch Hitman and Cassie, you're like, you're like, what? Huh? Why? I don't get it. I don't get it neither, to be honest with you. Yo, man. Before we get out of here, oh, before we leave this topic, I should say, not get out of here. We still got another 20 minutes. I want to play this. Last week I battled, next week I battled. Feel like I'm on a tour date. Tomorrow, Easter, that's the Lord's Day. This finna be a curry. 30. I reverse punches. Wait, you're a clay more? I'm Achilles. I'm more clay. I'm never. A word is too good, man. A word is too good, man. A word is different. A word is different. You know that was a rebuttal. Like that wasn't even like written. Like this guy's rebuttaling like schemes, four bar setups, multis. Like he really might be one of the best rebuttalers out right now. I know everybody says Chef Trez still number one, but I haven't watched a Chef Trez battle yet that's really caught my radars or has been like major. But goddamn, that shit was crazy. That Coke so white bar stormed the Capitol. That bar was crazy. Deshaun Watson bar was crazy. Like, a one gave you so many quotables this past weekend against an Ill Will, one of the top four battle rappers in the world. And Ill Will was good. In fact, hold on. I'm going to give Ill Will some credit. I haven't really talked about Will. I wanted to give Ward his flowers because we know Ill Will is elite. We know Will's one of those guys. Um, but can we talk about his second round for a quick second before we move on? When he stopped and ran up on Loso and was like, yeah, you were, you were F word. You were F word. It was brilliant because that was unscripted. It became a whole freestyle bar. And then it will kind of like tapped into his Howl of the Don crowd performance in, uh, uh, engagement participation kind of bag where Hollow had a line and the, made the crowd finish it. The, will did it on the spot. Son, son, ratchet. Son, son, ratchet. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. And the crowd goes, Lo Souza, F word. How do you have a whole crowd scream out that you're an F word? That's kind of crazy. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. It's, it almost made me realize, like, all right, I might need Mac and I might need Mac and Loso now. I might need it. I might actually need Mac and Loso to happen sooner than sooner than later. <laughs> Little Reggie says that was fire. <laughs> Uh, when Will said uh, the weapon bar, I'm your God and your father and your pastor. You said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This wasn't formed. It was manufactured. What the fuck, man? Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh my goodness gracious, man. Hey, hardcore flavor, I'm not mad at you, bro, because I think whoever you pick is winning Willa A Ward, you're gonna say the other person was fire. Like that's there's rare instances where performances raise both people's stock. That's one of those battles where nobody loses. You know what I'm saying? Nobody loses that battle. Nobody loses that battle. It's definitely one of the best battles this year thus far. Uh, I'm looking forward to see if the next eight months we can create eight, nine more battles that are better than that one. Um, let's talk a little bit, one more thing about uh, Max Out before we talk about Super Fight and Ultimate Madness uh, 3 that will be announced tonight. Red's track record on large crowds, big stages. Um, the most disappointing thing about Cassidy's performance this weekend he wasn't the worst battle rapper on the card. 
you, you know, like on resolution, he was the worst. On lockdown, he was the worst. No question. On max out, he wasn't even the worst guy. Show off was probably worse than him. Uh, oh, Red was probably worse than Cassidy. Like, these are real concerning things here. Like, what? Like, oh, Red got booed almost every round. Even his first round, which was a default win, was like, uh, all right, I guess. Yeah. Let's read the chat. Lil Reggie says, oh, oh, Red was ass, him and show off. Ozzy says, Red's material does not translate. Mm -mm -mm. Pulverize. Pulverize is bad, man. Pulverize is really bad. <laughs> Overrise is bad. Um, the translated the translation needed a better translator. Mm. I like that one. Man, the field just wasn't all the way there. I would say old Red needs a break, but he already had one. Red's first was light. His second and third was ass. Says CC. CC gonna be on tomorrow with me. Me and CC will be on tomorrow to be our daily ten thirty a.m. Oh Red, Harry Truman says, Oh Red needs to save some Uber money for a set of teeth. God damn. M4 says crowds are Old Red's weakness. Well, let's look at Old Red's last five battles. He battled Danger Zone where he choked, right? He battled O he battled A Ward, good battle. He battled Chef Trash, good battle. He battled JC where he choked then. So it's kinda like, wait, hold on. Like you've choked in or you had bad performances in three out of your last five, and the other two that were good were in small environments of less than like fifty people. Like, is 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 can you not rap over a crowd with three hundred plus people in it? Like, I, I'm I'm con I'm confused. I don't I don't get it. Let's go through some of the track record here of some of Old Red's big main stage battles. Um, obviously, no one. The infamous, there's no crying in the URL. You remember that? Where, where the girl told him, then stop crying. Yeah, that happened. His Sway Sever battle, he choked. Um, his Aver battle, a one-rounder where, eh, it was decent, right? His Calico performance is probably one of his best in the crop, but he's in Jersey. So, you know, we'll give him a check mark for that one. Um, against Big Cannon, Big Cannon stole the show with a rebuttal. Against Big T, it was a performance I don't really, I can't really remember that much, to be honest with you. Uh, against Rum Nitty, he choked. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Against Av, he choked. You know what I'm saying? Against K-Shine, another battle that was kind of lackluster for, for the two high-level names that were placed in front of each other. Um, against DNA, last battle of the night in a 90 degrees room where everybody kind of didn't have the energy for it. Um, against Ill Will, loses his voice. Against JC, chokes. Against Danny Myers, chokes. Every time there's a crowd of over 300 plus people, um, he hasn't had a good performance. Shouts to Bill Collector. Bill Collector in the building. Bill Collector with the Scion. I salute to Bill and his GTA streams on Caffeine. Has some of the best, interesting, most lit streams. I love the GTA videos he got going on. Bill says he is the GOAT, and Bill will be battling this weekend on a super fight card against Big T, Medium T, Medium Tuna. So, salute to, salute to Bill Collector. Salute to Bill Collector. We're looking forward to see you back on Caffeine. They should have brought you back a long time ago, but I know you're going to catch some work this weekend. And more importantly, real quick, shout out to Bill Collector for his third round against Marv. I really enjoy the fact that he took the time to just address the culture, get some shit off his chest. Sometimes it's not always about the battle. Sometimes it's about what you have to say and the message. He did that. You know what I'm saying? Book like this says, we're doing a Hitman versus Cassidy live on my channel at 12. Everybody in here at 12 o'clock, you know where to go. Go to Bill Collector's channel. Bill Collector came in here to get the promo going. Uh, salute to Bill. Make sure y'all go over there and support him, what he's got going on for himself. Lil Reggie says, oops, third round needs some shine. I've been hearing a lot about Oops third round. It's definitely a good round. It's definitely a round that kind of went under the radar. Some of those Born Legacy battles went completely under the radar because we had Double Impact. We had Max Out. Um, you know what I mean? We had um, this King of Dottie event's about to happen. Super Fight's about to happen. There's been events every week for the last three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Plus Bullpen. So from Bullpen to Double Impact to Max Out to Super Fight, that's four weeks of events. So I feel bad sometimes where like, certain things go under the radar. And, and just kind of fall flat or doesn't get the proper coverage it deserves. But there's so much happening in battle rap. So you got to understand that's part of the reason why some things kind of go under the radar. Um, oh, Red's track record on the big stage is not favorable. In his, um, I'm not sure what he needs at this point. Or more importantly, I'm not even really sure 
if the motivation is there, you know, this guy's been a champion of the year. He's got a couple of gnomes, some of madness on his belt. He's battled. Um, listen, man, Red's resume is pretty stacked. JC, A Ward, Daylight, John John, Iron Solomon, DNA, Cortez, Briz Rothstein, Big K, K Shine, Av, uh, Rum Nitty, Charlie Clips, T Rex, Big T, you know what I'm saying? X Factor in his prime, Calico in his early prime, A Verb. Uh, there's no. There's not a lot of matches out there left for this guy, really. So, it just becomes one of those things where, like, well, he's been around for 10-plus years. He's probably hit his peak already. He's hit some of the biggest accolades, some of the biggest stages, battled some of the biggest names. What's left for him? You know what I'm saying? What's left for Red? So, O Red peaked in 2017, says the no-pass look. O Red's voice is not reliable. Yeah, his vocal projection has failed him. Countless amount of times. Ored versus Shaw was that a big crowd? It was about maybe a buck twenty-five for a time, maybe a buck fifty. I wouldn't call that a big crowd. Anything over three hundred people is where he starts to struggle. He battled Daylight on Guerrilla Warfare. Jeremy Perkins, you can check that out. Ored has had three peaks in his career. Interesting level scales. Three peaks. I, I I think it's one really. I think it's just his champion of the year run and the year after was he was still a pretty good battle rapper, still pretty dangerous. But um, he definitely was one of those guys on RBE. At, for what you can count on, he never had a bad RBE performance. For for the least to say, like he may have had a lot of bad URL performances, uh, choked on King of the Dot. But RBE, he he his track record was clean on RBE until this weekend, and I almost kind of feel like Hitman and Cassidy. Kind of save Red from losing to Jag because, I mean, this wasn't one of my favorite Jags thus far I've seen, but Jag did more than enough to beat that Red, and that was a Jag that could have that was vulnerable in my opinion. That was a Jag that a lot of people could have taken out. So salutes to Jag though, salutes to Jag because he brings the energy, he brings the pressure, he doesn't let nothing you know make him fold. And Cassidy and Jag live to see another day. They're gonna talk so much shit if they get booked again. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The the shit these guys are about to talk is about to be so unruly. Oh my goodness. Dreadhead Red was crazy. Jag is wild. Jag is very wild. But Jag is entertaining. That's for sure. All right, man, let's close the show off of this real quick. Uh, Ultimate Madness 3 will be announced today. No, I do not know the lineup. Don't ask me. Wink, wink. Uh, it will be announced today at 8 o'clock on Caffeine URL's TV channel. We get to hear all the first round matches and, and contestants for this tournament. I do know that it's mixed tiers. I do know that there, there may be some top tiers. There may be some mid tiers. Might be some ladies. You know what I'm saying? We are definitely doing a bracket challenge for the fans. We're not just doing a bracket challenge for time. We're doing a bracket challenge. We're taking bets. We're taking parlays. We're taking straight up future bets. You pick your winner to win it all. We're doing everything. We're setting the odds. We are really going to go crazy this time around with Ultimate Madness Street. Bill says the lineup is crazy. I believe it, Bill. I definitely do. We're going to do it all. You're going to get to predict your, your finals matchup. Predict who wins the entire tournament. You can submit a perfect bracket for a couple thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? If you, we'll do round robin parlays for the first round. Can you predict the entire first round correct? 8 and 0? Can you go 8 and 0? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I don't think anybody can. That's a chance to all you guys. I don't think none of you guys can go 8 and 0 in predictions. So I'm looking forward to Ultimate Madness 3. It's, it's honestly my favorite season of Battle Rap, honestly, because of just creates ongoing storylines. It's like a it's like an XFL season, like a little college football season. Every every Saturday we got transactions. Every Saturday we got storylines, battles. Um, it, it's really great, man. It's really great. Holmesy killed a few folks the last Ultimate Madness. A few, a few. Four time when I when when LCBR partnered up with Cortez to take all these bets, Holmesy winning made us all the money that we needed to make. Nobody picked Holmesy, nobody picked Holmesy. All right, <laughs> so when Holmesy won, me and Cortez was just laughing to the bank. All right, I promise you guys, I guarantee you, no one can pick eight correct picks. I guarantee you, 
I will give you the best odds ever. All right? Somebody pull up the parlay calculator, man. What's an 18 parlay? <laughs> An eight team parlay pays a hundred eighty to one. All right, a hundred eighty to one. So you would have bet ten dollars on an eight team parlay, you get paid eighteen hundred dollars. I guarantee none of you guys will hit that. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, none of you guys will hit it. I promise you, and I and I will front the money. I have the money up front. We can do this. We 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 were saving just for Ultimate Madness Three. We have the bank. The Battle Rap Sports Book is coming. <laughs> Sanchez says I would. Loretta says I will. All right, man. Listen, I, I've I've done a lot of betting in my life. All right, I've I've done the Vegas, the Jersey, the Atlantic City, the online sports books, the foreign sports books, uh, basketball, soccer, hockey, baseball, football, tennis. You know, what I'm saying horse racing. Like you, you name it. We've done it all. And I'm telling you guys. The winner is the person getting the bets. I promise you, none of you guys will go eight and zero. I promise you, I promise you, none of you will go eight and zero. And we 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 will do this. Who bets on hockey? I do hardcore flavor. I'm a degenerate. What do you think this is? What do you think this is, man? <laughs> I right, just close the show with Gichi Gotti versus Math Hoffa. Uh, super fight weekend going down this weekend. Math makes his return to URL since Summer Madness 7 against Av. That was his last battle in the summer of 2018. Headlining against Gichigati, who now has his fourth caffeine headliner most all-time. Eighth for his career. Let's talk about it. I'll throw it to you guys first before we get up out of here. We got another seven minutes. Math versus Gichigati. What do you guys say out there? Half a 2-1. Juwan says degenerate gambler. The mechanic... Math will lose badly, says Reese. G420 says, salute to Geechee, making me want to watch a math battle. Oh, brother. Marcus says, math is going to have a tough time. CC says, 2-1, Geechee. Update guy says, Twitter argument is going to be something else. Hoffa gang, 2-1. Wow, there's a Hoffa gang in here. Geechee, Geechee, 30. I'm reading. Math is too simplified. Hardcore Flavor says, Geechee's about to make math want to fight for real. I just want Geechee to do a 30-30. Geechee finna bark on him. These cards be too close. Math will throw the battle. I oh, don't do that. Don't put that in the air. If Jag made Math walk off, Lord knows what Geechee's gonna do. Will Math hear an echo? Hmm. I know one thing. That caffeine chat is gonna go crazy. Absolutely crazy while Math is battling. Like, I almost feel bad. I, I actually feel like he's going to say some dope stuff and it's not going to get credit for it, believe it or not. I'm actually a little sympathetic because I know what you savages are going to do in there. All right, I want to point out some numbers. URL puts up a Twitter poll for their super fight. Who do you have, Geechee Gotti versus Math Hoffa? In 677 votes, uh, Geechee Gotti has 87%. That's correct, 87%. That means over 588 votes. That's less than 100 votes in favor of Mav Hoffa. He has a total of 13%. Um, I want to put that out there. I'm not starting no narrative. I'm just. This is just the numbers. This is what you guys out there are voting, all right? It's what you guys are out there voting. This is the same expectations Hitman and Cassidy had. It's the same poll, the exact same poll going into the battle. So what you guys are telling me is that Geechee Gotti has to beat Mav clear. If math makes it competitive, Geechee loses. Because that's that's the logic with Cassidy winning for a lot of people, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, if if Geechee Gotti doesn't beat math every round, like, no. I don't believe none of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in none of that. So every time you guys do this, right, where you make somebody this big of an underdog, you lower their expectations and increase the expectations of the other person. And I just hope Geechee Gotti is aware that his expectations are high. He's highly favored uh, by the fans that are voting for this. Um, and bad rappers can say they don't care about the polls. But then bad rappers always say, oh, I'm an underdog. You know how they be, I don't care about the caffeine votes. I don't care about the app votes. I don't care about the Twitter polls. But then in the face-off, they'd be like, oh, I'm the underdog. They got me effed up. They got me effed up, man. I'm the underdog. You know how this goes. So, um, genuinely speaking, 
I think math will come with a hundred percent effort. Uh, math is math. Just because you don't like math doesn't mean he doesn't give effort. Doesn't mean that he doesn't put a hundred percent of his power into trying to give a great performance. Does it translate into a great performance? Do people always like the bars? Do people always like the angles? That's a hit or miss. But he's definitely going to give Gichi Gotti uh, everything. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at him. He's going to throw the, the, <laughs> the cups, the coffee pot, the plates, the dish. He's going to throw everything at Gichi Gotti. Now, Gichi Gotti only battling twice this year, having his longest layover since 2017. You've seen it in the, in the Tay Rock and Easy battle. That guy looked very well rested. That guy looked spooky. That guy looked dangerous. And he elevated Swamp. All right? And that's because he had enough time to rest. He is battling a Geechee guy that has not been this rested since 2017, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but it's been four years. Um, I'm concerned because at this moment in time, the highest level Geechee is outperforming the highest level math. Um, I'm not sure what angles are available for math to use on Geechee. But we know that Geechee has a plethora of angles to use on math. Whether they're new, whether they're old, whether they're reconstructed. Lavish says, stop giving Geechee Gotti credit for Swamp. What, 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 what else am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Say Swamp did it by himself? No. No. Math has been sitting on bars <laughs> and still going to get bodied, says Lil Reggie. I'll throw it to you guys. We'll end it with you guys here. The, this Legends math's got more lyrical, though. Uh, math versus Geechee. What else you guys got to say about it out there? Keep in mind that Math's last performance on URL was Av. You don't think that he is inspired to not look that way ever again? I would think so. Math might surprise y'all again. I don't think he is going to surprise us, JR. I think he's going to be good. I think he's actually going to be good. The problem is a good math doesn't beat a great Geechee. That's, that, that's the issue. I don't think by any means that math will be bad. I think math will actually be very good. He's going to come with 100% will to defeat Geechee. But this is, Geechee got is just better right now. That's just how I see it. Geechee didn't do that himself. Swamp probably gave him some dope stuff too. Yeah, okay, Lavish. I know he's not beating no damn Geechee. Stop this for smack. I'm feeling sorry. Math's in the chat. <laughs> Geechee's doing math worse than Calico did. Yikes. They both have slip-ups in their rounds at times. That is true, BX Legend. That is true. Math won't make it close. Half a... Math won't make it close. Half a 2-1 clear. Here we go. Problem MT says math two one clear. All right. The chat's not happy with you, sir. The chat is not happy with you. I'm excited for Super Fight though. I'm excited. Um, yeah, math's definitely not beating Geechee on the caffeine votes. That's definitely not happening. Um, Geechee's too much of a fan favorite. Um, I'm I'm really here for the chat to be honest. I cannot wait to see how the chat reacts to that battle. Put some respect on Swamp. I, I will, man. I will. Swamp had a great two-on-two -two performance with Geechee. I can't wait to see what he does in this next one-on-one -on -one battle. The battlers are going to be going against Mav, says CeCe. I think this is his biggest battle since he came up. This is definitely a big battle since since his podcast. I will admit that. Reed beat Rum on Caffeine. That he did. And that was a high-expectation battle, too. Does the caffeine and app votes really matter? Hell yeah, they do. BX Legend, respect the vote. The caffeine votes are in the building. App votes is on camera. Respect the vote. And in, in, in the words of Smack, respect the vote. Math's first battle on caffeine. He got a main event. Yo, man, Math is still a high level guy. Like, I know you guys be playing him. I know he's become a heel, but like, there's a guy that's headlined on Don't Flop RB, King of the Die, and URL. It's only like three other battles that can say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep in mind, this is still like. One of our legends. So, Math got three battles that night. Geechee, the fans in Surf. We haven't even talked about Surf commentating for that battle, which is going to be extremely biased. And it's funny because everybody's like, I hate biased commentary. But then you're going to see Math 
in surf, right? And surf's gonna probably throw jabs at math all night long, and no one's gonna complain about bias commentary because it's math. You're gonna allow it because it's surf. Like, do you guys like bias commentary or not? Like, I don't, I don't get. It. You can't pick and choose. Um, we gotta be fair, guys. It's true, CC. We have to be fair. They, these guys don't look. We have to be fair. They don't gotta be fair. These guys are lions. They're savages. They're tigers. They don't gotta play fair. And they won't play fair. It ain't biased if it's true. Says the update guy. Oh, bro. Surf wouldn't host that battle. Be exception. You can win Twitter polls and votes. Mook's the only way I get paid. I'm the GOAT. <laughs> uh, Surf is going to make math choke. I don't think so. No matter what happens to Surf, eyes is Gotti 30. Is Surf really being biased when he says math is bad? Yes, he is being biased because you're commentating and you're supposed to be professional. If you, if you want to do all that, don't commentate, all right? Y'all yeah, will kill Jay Black, right, if he was doing that. Y'all yeah, will kill yeah, killed Henny Man for this. Like, Surf needs to get the same treatment, guys. Like, don't don't just, don't just, don't do that. This is a preview for Toxic Thursday, I see. We should appreciate the honesty. These are the same people that said run with 3 0 Reed. You're absolutely right. B, uh, says BX Legend Surf needs to. He won't because the fans. The truth sounds like hate to the people that hate the truth. Yo, don't bring this Vada Fly quote in here, little Reggie. Shout out to Vada Fly, man. Don't bring. Don't be bringing them. Don't be bringing them haymakers in here. All right. I promise you, if you want to express your hate, you imagine me. Uh, commentating a Queen of the Ring event and Miss Hustle's headlining the card. I, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. I probably wouldn't be able to do it because you guys think I wouldn't keep it real. And you guys would criticize me for it. So I wouldn't do it. It's going to be the exact same thing if if Surf is commentating for this math card. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. I'm not lying. That's the problem. I'm not lying. That's the problem. And so, in fact, you guys are going to be lying when math ends up probably giving a good performance. France stick to statistics. You're right. I'm going to stick to the statistics. I don't want to commentate. I don't want to commentate for that reason. Everybody don't got to do everything. That's perfectly fine. After seeing Surf lose to Reed, where he can, he can stay right where he's at. Just let Surf do the face-offs. This is Surf's chance for revenge. That's all I'm saying. And y'all are going to love every single bit of it, but then you're going to complain in, in the near future when you call. Like, you guys complain when Surf didn't say Chilla Jones beat Shine. Isn't that bias? I, I don't get it. This, that's the truth, right? That's literally the truth there too, right? Nobody complained then, right? Or maybe I did complain, but now now with Mav, it's going to be different energy. Like, I, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. And you know what? I'm going to leave it at this. The, all energies never meant the same. All energies never kept the same. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. It is what it is, man. All right, man. We're done for the day, man. LTBR daily, Monday through Thursday, 1030 a.m. So about 1130 Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back tomorrow at 1030. We'll be back at 1030 with CC. Salute to everybody. Have a blessed day. This will be uploaded on the YouTube and all the streaming platforms today. And as always, appreciate you guys for tuning in.